Design Leader Insights is brought to you by Fuego UX. Fuego UX is a leading UX research, strategy, and design consultancy. Hey, Guile. Thanks so much for uh, joining the show today. Thank you for having me, Alex. Yeah, for sure. And as we get started, um, you give us a little bit of context in your journey in design. Sure. So I am a dinosaur. I've been uh, in design since 1998. That was the first time I picked up a mouse and touched Photoshop, I believe it was 4.0, and never really looked back. And I absolutely fell in love. That could maybe be considered my first love. And, um, you know, so started, I guess started off with design. I was more on the graphic designer side and then moved to uh, print and then eventually moved on to web. In transitioning into web design, I also um, went front end development. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, the full gamut of that, um, PHP. And that was out of a necessity of the time I was freelancing um, and doing contract work. So this is early 2000s. So back then, it's like there's there's less differentiation between like a web developer and a web designer. So a lot of people were kind of doing both. Um, right. But in my garden, um, going from freelancing into doing contract work, I learned how, okay, well, most companies, there's usually a separation of church and state, and you're either on the development side or you're on the design side. And my passion was always a lot more on the design side. Just diving into customer problems and the customer experience was something that I was always passionate about. So over the years, I worked for... Um, by design in several different industries, um, retail, hospitality, telecom, um, and so, uh, a couple others. And I've been able to learn uh, the needs of different users across different industries, which is something I care about me to the design. Nice. Yeah, and tell me about like where where you're at now, um, how I think you've made a, a pretty big journey from oh, over those years from being in the file, like designing to now leading large teams. Like to, to, let's, I'd love to learn a little bit about that. Like where you're at now and that kind of journey to, from being in the yeah. file to uh, leading people, tons of people that are in the file. Um, for me, my why was, I've always felt like I was an advocate for design and for the craft and for designers. Um, I've always been comfortable having the uncomfortable conversations, um, pushing back uh asking why like why are we doing something right I, um i was never really good at being like an order taker i don't know if that's a good or bad thing probably a little bit of both and so um like even early on in the days i was always the person asking like why are we doing this like it times it makes sense and times it doesn't but i was always looking for clarity and in that journey i found out that uh desire was usually looked at as a service provider and not necessarily a thought partner. And so I felt like, I always felt like we are more invested and we're more, uh, we should be more involved in the decision-making process on what the user experience is, or we shouldn't be getting yeah. um, a drive of order from somebody that needs something to look pretty, you know? And so I felt like for my why, going into the leadership side of goals, it was primarily because I want to be someone that could advocate for design and designers and the different crafts that are often associated or fall under the design umbrella. Um, I've been able to, I think I've been successful at making the leap and I've been able to see like tremendous growth. And I'm still passionate about advocating for design and make sure like the designers have a seat at the table and they're able to not just have it, but also keep it. Because sometimes you can have a lot of seat, but they'll lose it. But I don't make sure like we're able to keep that seat and maintain that. Tell me about like learning. I think a lot of managers struggle with this because they were so close to design or whatever their craft is, if it's even outside of design. Learning how to delegate and like be okay with the team making errors or taking longer yeah. than you may have to, to accomplish the task. Yeah. So I used to have this issue when, when I was more of an IC. Like, uh, like I used to chase perfection or what I think was perfect. Even in my freelance days, I'd take days, hours, weeks to design this thing. And then I'd be done and I'd look at it and say, I hate this. I don't like it. And I'd 
to start from scratch. And it's like, you're kind of like killing time and you keep going in this endless cycle of chasing perfection. Yeah. So over time I learned that, um, that it was dating a great and that it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, we iterate on a lot of things, but it does need to solve customer problems. And so going from an IC to a people leader, there's a transition you go through mentally of knowing that, Hey, I could design this thing, but do I have trust in this other person to do it? And I talked to like a lot of, uh, I see still, and I always tell them like, Hey, like you need to build trust in your manager, but don't forget it's two way thing. Like you're not, I don't believe like you should be subservient to your manager. I think your manager also has a job to serve, um, the IC also. So building trust is very important, but, um, no, a lot of times once you make the leap from, um, an IC to a people leader, you sometimes feel like, Hey, it's quicker. If I just do it. I just knock it out. Yeah. Or yes, person that didn't do it exactly how I would have done it. And you know what? That's okay. I have like a four year old son and I'm teaching him now that like there's multiple ways to do things. Um, there's multiple ways to get places. And what's because you would do things one way. It may be, may be the best way. It may not, but there's other ways to do it. And when you look at the growth of someone else, um, people grow by being able to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. And yeah. sometimes they're not making mistakes. Sometimes they are doing a better job. And so I think like as a people leader, it's important to say, I'm going to back away from actually being in the file and being prescriptive and say, Hey, do it exactly this way, but pivot more to like a conversation where you're helping, um, other people think about their process and think about why are they choosing to do it a certain way and try to, um, probe and coach them on questions and help them actually generate their own questions to go deeper into the customer problem want to try to solve. Yeah. Love that. It's different, different world than, than when you got started in design, you know, you talked about learning and code and maybe that's relevant. Maybe it isn't now, but, but yeah. what advice do you have for people looking to break into this field today? Um, so when you first break into the field, you kind of get everything thrown at you, right? You think, uh, you'll think you're supposed to be a designer. You'll think you're supposed to code. You think you're supposed to be a researcher. You think yeah. you're supposed to be a content designer and you're, you'll, you don't initially think like, I need to be the best at all of this, these things. Um, and it's good to have exposure. It's kind of like, um, when you go to college, right? You get exposed to all these classes and you know, like, uh, you're sometimes you're thinking like, Hey, what am I going to use Roman literature from the 16th century? Right? Like never used it. Still never used it. When, when does that, when does that come into play in my career? Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of times it's about exposure and helping you just think about different scenarios in different ways. And so, um, but as you go on, then you start either finding what you're good at or what you're passionate about. And sometimes they're not the same thing. And that's okay also, right? The thing that you're passionate about, you're great at it. Then you probably have a match made in heaven. If not, then you know, that's the area that you can um focus on to to continue honing your craft. Take it all in initially, but kind of pay attention to yourself and don't don't lie to yourself about what you're passionate and what you're good at. Um and just, you know, try to follow your heart. Yeah. Always get advice. Uh Kyle, thanks so much. Where can people go to to learn more about what you're up to or follow you? Uh, I'm pretty boring on social, but I am pretty active on, on, on LinkedIn. And it's just, uh, my name is Kyle LeBlanc on LinkedIn. Actually, okay. it's Kyle LeBlanc on Twitter, Alex and Kyle LeBlanc on LinkedIn and Instagram. I was able to get like my name on a lot, a lot of the platforms. And if my name is not available, I just won't join the platform. Nice. I like that. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show today. No problem. I appreciate it. Look forward to joining you again. <laughs> <laughs>